In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know about using the one, two button on an audio mixer. We're going to show you where to find it. We're going to explain what it does. And then we're going to walk through two common examples that I would use when I would and would not use the one, two button on an audio mixer. Now for the purposes of the video today, we're using the Yamaha MG12 XU audio mixer. This is the smallest audio mixer or tied with the smallest audio mixer that I know that has a one, two button on it. This is more and more common now with any audio mixer that's 12 channels or more. It used to be reserved for larger audio mixers, but now you can get it in a nice compact audio mixer as well. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, or if you want to see a couple other audio mixers that have a one, two button on it, please do check out the links down in the description below where you can find everything you can see here from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now, where do you find this one, two button on an audio mixer? Typically you'll find it right near the bottom of the audio mixer, right beside a fader. It will be some sort of a toggle button or clicky button. So you can engage it or disengage it as you want. And it will always correspond to the fader that it's beside. You can see here that there's a one, two button here, right beside a fader. There's a line left or right of this control strip here. So you know which fader it is assigned to. Now, what does this button actually do? This is a way of routing the channel of your audio mixer into what's known as a subgroup. So this gives you all kinds of different control. So say I don't want this fader to go to a stereo mix. I just want to put it to a subgroup. Now there's a lot of different reasons for that. You can just select one, two, and it gets sent to this fader instead of going to the main stereo output. From there, you typically have other routing options. You can pass it from this fader to the stereo output with it. If you press down the ST or stereo button, but let's walk through some examples here so we can actually talk about what that looks like in real practical terms. The best example that I can think of of how to use the one, two button and when I would use it is when you have a lot of similar channels that you want to group together. So the best example for me would be the drum kit. You might have two drum mics or you might have 10 drum mics depending on the drum kit, but sometimes you want to turn them all up or down together. So say you have a mix here with say three or four faders, five faders here, that are all assigned to the drums. If these first five are assigned to the drums, instead of clicking the red button that sends them to the main stereo mix, I'll click the one, two button on all five of these and it gets sent to the stereo one, two group. From here, now I have one fader that turns all these up and down. So you can imagine if you wanna turn the drums up, you used to have to turn them all up and keep them all even, but it keeps messing with your mix. So instead you can leave the faders where they are. It won't affect your auxes or your monitor sends or anything like that. But now if you want to turn down that whole group of channels, you can do that with one fader. Now, as I mentioned before, you can still send this to the main stereo mix. You just have to click this ST button, then it will carry on. If you don't click that, then the drum channel that you assign to one, two here will just stay at this fader. So you always do have to click that button if this is what you're doing. This also works for things like grouping vocalists together. Sometimes I group a bunch of guitars together. If there's like a horn section or any type of similar type of content, I will group those into subgroups. On a smaller mixer like this, you only get a one, two, but on a larger mixer, you might get three or four different subgroups, which can really make mixing a whole lot easier. Now, the second way that you can use this is you can kind of use it as an aux channel. I do this quite a bit if you're doing stuff like live streaming. If you don't need a separate mix, but you might have some restrictions on something like a live stream, like maybe you can't play the music on the broadcast, or maybe one or two channels shouldn't be routed this way. Or even if you're not live streaming, maybe you're sending to another room in the same building. But again, maybe you have some channels that you don't want to send all the way to that other room for various reasons. This does come up quite a bit. You can go through all your faders. So all your faders in this scenario would be going to the stereo mix. You press the ST button to route them all to the main stereo output. But maybe all of them except channel one can go to this other channel that is controlled by group one, two here. So in this case, you would not want this main stereo button on the group one, two to be pressed because this is 
totally separate and you don't want it to carry on to the stereo output. And then this mix for your live stream or, or auxiliary room or breakout room or whatever, you would just take out a group one, two at the top of the mixer and send that where you need to send it. So this can be a useful tool in a variety of situations and it will make your life easier if you know how to use this subgroup or group one, two or one, two button like we explained in this video. If you have any questions about how we set this up or if you have any comments or anything, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing or specs for this audio mixer or other audio mixers like it, we have some links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.